This year I'm just gonna use the same Halloween game from last year. But since I have a 3D printer this year, I've decided to make two outdoor Halloween decorations. And this is the first one. As usual, you can find all the files and everything in the description. I've uh, printed these bottom parts and then we have the uh, eyes. And uh, those are easy, you just uh, pop them in. To make the eyes, I'm going to be using uh, four resistors, eight uh, red LEDs, one pair per eye, and one of these connectors, which I'm going to uh, connect all the eyes to. The reason I'm going to use one of these with five is that I, I'm going to be able to blink the eyes individually. And if I'm going to use an AT Tiny for this, then I will be able to use uh, four pins. So uh, it works quite well with uh, four different outputs and uh, one ground. I'm going to start by preparing the LEDs. I cut the legs fairly short, but the anode should be a little bit longer. Just so I remember which is which. Half of these will uh, need resistors. I'm going to use a lithium polymer battery for this. Which means it goes up to 4.2 volts. So technically this um, 39 ohms resistor is a little bit low. You might want to go a bit higher, but it's only going to be 4.2 volts right when it begins. And the forward voltage does seem to vary a bit. So when I tested this with my multimeter, I was actually getting about 20 milliamps with these resistors. I'm putting all the resistors here on the uh, cathode, which is the uh, shorter one, the one that goes to ground. And the reason only half of these ones have uh, resistors on them is that I'll be wiring them in series. I'm gonna waste less uh, energy by doing that as well. There we go, got solder on all the LEDs. Time to start preparing the wires, and they're going to have to be uh, of varying distances, so I'm just gonna cut them up. I'm thinking uh, two sets. All the same distance. Oh, I love this wire, it's so thin. This one is uh, positive because it's a little bit uh, coppered. So the idea here is that the eyes, I think they look best when they're actually poking in like this. But that means it has to go uh, through all the way like that. This piece of wire here, the uh, not that one, but this one, needs to go uh, like that. So one needs to be shorter than the other. And you're going to see why in a moment. So first I need to get the LED that doesn't have uh, a resistor on it. And then I'll put the uh, loose wire here on the cathode, which is the shorter wire that goes to ground. And uh, the, the input wire which is the, the long one here, it needs to sit on the anode because um, voltage from uh, the battery is going to come in here. So it comes in here through the anode into the cathode and from the cathode it needs to go over to the uh, other LED. Oh, hang on, I'm an idiot. So yes, th this is probably, um, if someone's going to do this, they're probably going to mess up on this as well. You could uh, put it through the, the hole here in the side. I'll do that later, you have to do that first. Later on you should probably plug this hole with uh, some uh, glue. And then there's a hole here in the middle. I'll push the ground wire through. And now uh, this one needs to go to the anode of this uh, LED. I'll try not to burn my fingers here. And the other one should go to the cathode, so I'll snip this leg. There we go. So before I do anything else, let's uh, plug it in to a battery and see if it lights. I have this uh, 1200 milliamp hour battery, lithium polymer. Okay, the battery is at 3.9 volts, so uh, it's fairly charged. 
I haven't actually charged this one yet, it just came like that. Which means I might be able to get this to work now. And I think it should be hooked up like this. If I cross these wires. Yeah, we do get some light. It's not very bright, but on the other hand, I'm holding this down with my hands right now, so also it's uh bright in here, so should work. Though uh, the first one is uh, a little bit dimmer. I'm not sure if that's just the LED or if it's something with the circuit, but I don't think it matters if one, one eye is a little bit brighter than the other. That just makes it more spooky. And now if you want to see what it looks like with the uh, eyelid things on, I'm just going to put them on. They are um, not symmetric. So, the left eye goes on the left and so forth. Just push it down and it snaps in. And I think, yeah, this should be the right, the correct eye. This is what it looks like with the eyes on. What is going to be look like in the dark? So it's not very bright, but I think it should be bright enough that it's visible at least. And it will be a little bit more bright when the battery is fully charged. The next thing I need to do is uh, do the rest of the three eyes. But I'm probably just going to skip that and hop directly to the next part. For the battery, I'm going to be using this uh, cheap USB charging circuit. All you got to do is uh, attach the battery negative to B minus. And the battery positive to B plus. I think this one also has uh, overcharge and over discharge protection, but uh, the battery has that built in as well, so that's not really needed. But these are cheap enough that you can order them in bulk. And then to charge, you just plug it in the USB port, and now it's charging at about 400 milliamps. Here I've wrapped all the uh, ground connectors together into one big cluster because uh, we're going to need to connect all of those to the same pin and I'm going to put that out on the edge and a lot of solder to that one and now I should be able to connect the big ground blob here Now from this point I should be able to power any of these. Just putting a clip there. We have one, two, three, and four. Yep, all of them are working now. So that means uh, I just got to solder on the uh, the uh, voltage pins. Start by adding some solder to the pins. I've repaired some heat shrink, but um, it's not going to make it all the way, it's just going to help me uh, maintain the cables. And then I'll do uh, some tape for the rest. No, I just need some tape. Okay, it's not great. But uh, it should last me a season. Let's get started on the circuitry. This is the circuit I've made. It's not going to be very visible on the camera, so I'll just put it up in the corner. It uses an AT Tiny 13 microcontroller. And that's connected to the battery with just a small uh, filtering capacitor on it. And it's connected to the uh, peer sensor to wake it up. And it's connected to the uh, four sets of eyes. And as you can see, they're just being powered directly by the I.O. pins. Which you should be careful when you're doing. But since we're, be go we're going to be drawing 20 milliamps per pair. Well, that is within the ratings of the microcontroller. 
because uh, if we're looking at the maximum ratings, the DC current per I.O. pin is uh, rated quite high on the uh, Tiny 13 at uh, 40 milliamps. And the LEDs are going to be drawing half of that, so it should be safe. And then the maximum current uh, for the entire microcontroller is rated at uh, 200 milliamps, and again, I will be less than half than that, so that should be fine for this circuit. But for anything larger than this, you probably want to use a transistor. I have 3D printed a couple of parts. This one is uh, just a small box where I can put the uh, peer sensor and a uh, plug to uh, connect it up to the uh, main one because I'm going to want to put the peer sensor somewhere uh, closer to the walkway so that it can actually sense the people going by. And then I have the second box which will be the main box and here I put the battery and the uh, charge module that I connected. And I have one of these uh, small, I think these are from SparkFun quite cheap uh, perf boards that I can solder, solder everything to and uh, that one just screws in and then it has two holes for the uh, two plugs one will go to uh, the LEDs and the other one will go to the peer sensor the reason the battery charger is pointing inwards is because this is going to be sitting outside and I don't want to get any moisture or uh, dirt or anything into the USB port here so you're gonna have to open it up when you're gonna charge it but uh, this thing, unless there's a, a lot of people walking by, it should last at least a couple of weeks, which should be fine for Halloween. And this is a peer sensor module that is just a cheap uh, Chinese one, so you can get these anywhere. So you don't have to uh, solder everything together yourself. And it's designed so that the uh, plastic part can uh, can slot in. So all you have to do here is add a bit of super glue to the corners. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have printed it in black, it's kind of hard to see. And once the uh, glue has set, I'm probably going to want to put some uh, silicone on the outside, just to uh, prevent any moisture from getting, in, from getting in there. So that's that one on, and then I'm going to need to do the same with the uh, JST connector. The 3-pin one. The uh, STL files for this uh, 3D print is uh, in the description as well. It's probably going to be a GitHub project, and I'll just put everything in there. And you're probably also going to be able to find all this on the Thingiverse. There we go. And uh, once this thing is in, I'm probably going to want to put some uh, silicone around it as well, just to prevent um, moisture from get getting into this thing. Pop that one in and then I'm just going to go uh, with the wires straight across here. So the leftmost one here is... I'm not sure actually. I should have checked that before I popped it in. Ground left, output in the middle and voltage on the right on this one. And in order to, to get it to not fall off, I'm just going to add a little bit of traditional glue. And since this isn't going to move, I can uh, use this, uh, this more solid wire. Um, I have no idea how visible this is going to be since it's a black case. Let's give it a try. So now we have the peer sensor on. Before I put the lid on, I will be adding some silicone to it, just to uh, help waterproof it. I'm also going to add some around the uh, peer sensor here. Once I've uh, plugged it in, I'm probably also going to be adding some uh, here. I have a feeling I'm going to have to do a lot of trial and error on this thing in order to get it running the way I want it. And uh, then I want to put on the filtering capacitor or the decoupling capacitor. I 
the circuit isn't going to need anything bigger because it's just going to be driving some small LEDs. It's a little bit different if you're going to make stuff with motors, then you're probably going to want uh, some bigger capacitors on there as well. But 0 0.1 microfarads should be enough for uh, for this one. Let's put some solder on uh, the pins. And then on the right side, put a black wire on the left. Let's uh, solder on the 5 pin JST connector, that should go out to the ice. And I'll put all the ground connectors here on the right side. I'll add the ground lead here on the right because that's the only one that should go to ground. And then I need a grand total of four of these uh, red wires. These are actually wires that I've uh, reused because uh, I have these uh, pre crimped JST uh, connectors. And um, I often uh, cut them short because I don't need the entire lead. And then I just save the wires and reuse them in other projects. No need to throw away good wires, especially when wires are quite expensive. Costs more than you'd think when you get started with this stuff. Also, always keep wall adapters, provided they're actually working, because a lot of wall adapters will use uh, standard values like. Uh, 5 volts, 9 volts or 12 volts and that is going to come in handy for a lot of projects. So now I'm just going to cut these to a uniform length. I actually have uh, three wire strippers and they all have different uses. This one, the blue one that I've ju just used, is really good for uh, single wires that are uh, longer than a couple of centimeters. Then I have one that can be used for uh, larger wires and uh, better for you cutting multiple ones at the same time. And then I have one which is for um, really good for cutting short wires or stripping short wires. There it goes. So now I need to connect these up to the uh, microcontroller. Let's start by connecting the uh, peer sensor plug socket thing. And uh, that one, I put that on PB4, which is down here on the left side right next to the ground. So we need one here and then three on the other side. This perf board is actually connected three by three so uh, these three rows here are connected and these three down here and then we have three up here. So that way I don't have to uh, bend the legs here. I can just uh, solder them directly too. I just wish uh, these were two-sided. But you can't have everything. And they're fairly cheap. I actually think I might want to, to put a small uh, power switch on this also. So I'm going to go grab one. I'll have these little switches that are rated at... Uh, 200 milliamps. So uh, put one of these on just between this one and uh, the power input. Let's see, it has to be put in this way. And because the legs aren't designed to fit on uh, one of these small perf boards, I'm going to cut one off. Just need to make sure not to cut the middle leg off because that's the common one. 
So now that it's pushed up, like in the position it is right now, it will be on. I think the best option here might be to add a bit of solder to it and then push it through. Now I need to go from here up to here, which is the voltage input. It doesn't need to look that pretty. I mean, it's not not a lot of components on this board, so this is actually one of the easier projects I've made. I'm probably going to regret saying that once I get to uh, writing the software for this, because uh, that's usually when you realize that your simple little project might not have been as simple as you intended. And then you have to go back and re-solder everything. Now remember to use a switch rated for your project or just have the switch drive a MOSFET. Okay, so next up I need to connect ground down here. I gave the circuit a little space between the switch and uh, the microcontroller because uh, I want to be able to put uh, ground on uh, this one so I can make a little ground extension there because I only have uh, one hole here that connects to ground and I have three things that need to be connected there so I'll solder on this long pin here and then I'm gonna put on the other two ground connectors and then what I'm gonna do here is uh, bend this pin down so that uh, I don't have a block of six holes that are all connected to ground and then there's one more wire here that needs to be connected and that one goes to uh, to uh, just the voltage so I'm gonna use a slightly longer pin and I'm gonna do the same bendy thing there because I've already used all the three uh, holes here. Oh. Well I didn't have to bend the pin because uh, apparently it uh, connected these two when I was soldering it. So that was a happy little accident. Now I have these JST connectors uh, hooked up. Which means it's uh, time to connect the battery. Start by getting some solder on these leads. And connecting them to the battery. Making sure to get the polarity right. So I can pop the charger back in. And the circuit sits up there in the corner and then uh, the point is you uh, connect these to the case. Now I'm going to put this on in the correct order here. So. Uh, we have uh, power is closest to me, and then with the data pin is green in the middle. And then we have the uh, ground here on the top. But it doesn't really matter as long as it just goes straight across. But since they're color coded, might as well get the color right. I'll do the same on the other end, though it's going to be reversed. What I'm going to do here also is put some tape on that and maybe some heat shrink. Yeah, this tape is pretty garbage. It's barely sticking. But uh, let's get some heat shrink on there. It's not going to be a perfect fit, but it will help. I'll use this uh, slightly cooler part of the soldering iron to To shrink it down a bit. I'm just tape it up a little bit. So hopefully that should help. I'll do the same thing on the other side. This will work. It won't look good, but it'll work. I realized that it was probably not the best idea to put the lid on yet because you need to uh, configure the peer sensor 
and the peer sensor has th three different things you can configure first you can set it into uh, re-triggering mode if you want to it's not gonna matter really because uh, whenever this thing sends out a pulse it's gonna wake up the uh, microcontroller and that's gonna remove the interrupt which means that it's only gonna happen once to wake it up and a any extra ones sent after that won't have any effect until it goes back to sleep again and then it has uh, two potentiometers that you can uh, screw on at the bottom one of them sets the time and the other one sets uh, the sensitivity I uh, set the sensitivity about midway but you're really just gonna have to uh, put it where you want it and then walk by adjust the sensitivity until you, you get something where it's uh, gonna work for you at that location and uh, then the other one controls the time and I've set that to the minimum value because uh, sending a long pulse doesn't really matter might as well keep it short so this this thing should now be sort of configured but I before I put the lid back on I need to take it out and actually test it so I'm just gonna leave it off for now and then I have uh, programmed the microcontroller put, put it here so uh, that one works all I need to do now is uh, glue on the connectors and also add a screw here to keep it in place and as far as the screw goes I'm just gonna go with a trusty old laptop screw and that's gonna keep that in place so I think I'll start by making sure that you can actually get the uh, connector through the hole here Yeah, these prints are never proper on the first go, so that's why I have an exacto knife. Just gonna clean up a little bit, put my faith in the super glue. It's always difficult to, uh, to film these black prints. Now uh, the glue there is going to set and then it should be ready. One thing I'm also going to do is uh, print out the eyelids in uh, transparent PETG because the uh, the white they, they didn't really shine through that well as I had hoped so I think it's just going to look better and be uh, more hidden in daylight when I use uh, transparent. So that's what I'm going to do next and then I'm going to plug it in and see how it works. Here I put the transparent lids onto the eyes and I also experimented a little bit with different uh, lid colors. What I found out is that going with a black base and uh, transparent lids on top of that does give it uh, kind of a sinister roundish eye look. Whereas if you want uh, big very luminescent eyes then you can go with uh, transparent or white lids and a, a completely white base. But I thought this looks pretty cool. It's not going to be very visible when I uh, Turn it on here. It's just gonna look like uh, LEDs because it's so transparent. But uh, if I turn off the lights, it should be a little bit brighter. I programmed this so that it should stay on for about a minute and then shut down until the, the peer sensor is triggered. So I'm just gonna wait and see if it shuts down. Okay, there we go, now it's shut down. So when I wave my hand in front of the peer sensor, it should uh, now turn on again. So yeah, I'm gonna go and uh, put this out in the bush and uh, see if I can get it to work. I've hung the box up on the inside of my hedge and put some silicone on uh, the connectors so that there shouldn't be any moisture entering it. And I've attached the eyes also on the inside of the hedge, which is some garden wire. And the peer sensor sits uh, on the outside of the hedge, so when someone goes by, it will trigger. So here's what it looks like when someone walks by. <laughs> 